Okay, so good morning, everyone. Um, I think still, it's still morning, so um, hope you all, everybody had a good beer event yesterday. So um, my name is Stefan Schmidt. Um, that's my colleague, uh, Christopher Michael. And today we are going to talk about the work we have been done working on um, Enlightenment as an uh, valent uh, compositor, standalone compositor. Yeah, sorry for the cutoff on the right side. I don't know how to fix that on a short notice. So. so who are we? So as I said, Stefan Schmidt and Christopher Michael. We are both um, EFL upstream developers for a long time. Chris is working on EFL for like 13 years, 13 years, 13 years something like that. I'm only working on it for like four years now. So. Um, we are also both working on in the open source group from Samsung in the UK. Um, part of our job there is to do direct open stream, uh, upstream work on the open source projects that Samsung is interested in. And in this case, that is um, Enlightenment and the EFL libraries. Yeah, so let's get started here. So just a quick agenda we have. So um, I will just give a quick round about the um, an EFL glossary so you know what I'm talking about. Um, talking about, about the Wayland toolkit support we have that is ongoing for several years now. Um, then we have like seven steps we had to go through or we are still working on to get um, the Wayland support uh, into Enlightenment so we have a standalone compositor. So first of all was uh, identifying what kind of components we actually need, what kind of stuff X offered us that Valent is missing, so we have to take care about that on our own now. Then second step was doing the actual rendering. Um, DM handling is also part of it, interfacing directly with the kernel. Um, then we have input handling, that is something we also have to take care about now. Um, BT handling, something nobody really wants to do, but we have to do it anyway. Um, yeah, session recovery is just another example um, because I'm working on that at the moment, um, what X was doing for us and Valent is missing a bit. We'll come to that. And then we'll um, tell what we are doing for normal X applications so we can still run them in this kind of setup. Um, we will finish with some talks about the missing pieces that what we think is missing in Valent to make it a, um, a full replacement for X. Given a status, so what we have working at the m moment, what we are working on, and yeah, finishing with a summary. Yeah, okay, that's cut off. Um, okay, so the EFL, that's when I abbreviate that, that's just the abbreviation for uh, Enlightenment Foundation Libraries. So that's a mouthful, so the normally we just see, say, EFL. So that is sort of the lower level libraries we have. You can see. Uh, diagram. I don't know if you can really see it well. Anyway, so it's um, we have different uh, types of libraries merged together now. Um, we have, for example, Einar is our data type library. Then we have Evers, which is our canvas library. We have Ecore, which does a lot of abstraction for X or other things, networking, and also the main loop integration and stuff like that. So that is, um, before we merged them all together, there have been single libraries. Uh, so we had like seven or eight of them. So at some point we decided it's just not useful and it's really hard for people to build them together and package them and so on. So we decided to merge them all together. So that's now EFL. Um, then we have elementary, that's our widget toolkit. So that is what you normally would use if you're going to write an application with, with EFL. Um, you would use elementary because that offers all the widgets. Then we have enlightenment, so, or an abbreviated, we call it just E. Um, that is the window manager, so this is the thing that's in the works for whatever, 15, 16, or longer years. Um, yeah, so Evers, that is part of it, that's the, the canvas library, EcoX, for example, was like our xlib abstraction. So just one quick slide about the toolkit support. Um, so in EFL, we have for a long time have um, Valent toolkit support already, started by Chris here in 2011. So um, as I said, that's going on for a while. We, have, we are able to run Valent applications within E. Um, if you have a normal enlightenment started on X or something, we can still run the Valent applications. On the other hand, we also can um, run um, EFL applications within Western as a reference design for Valent. So that works in both ways. Um, we also started to work on newer things like the subsurface protocol that was just mentioned in the GStreamer talk. That's a new thing in, in Valent. We're also trying to uh, work on that as well. And Actually, the support is not finished. Okay, so the support is already finished. I just heard. <laughs> um, 
Okay, but this talk is actually about the standalone Windows uh, Balan compositor, so that we are going back to that. Okay, so just to get an idea here, um, I mean, you might know these diagrams, they are from the Valent um, project side. So you can see that uh, in, in X server days, you have all the communication to the kernel, to KMS and EVDEV and stuff like that, going directly to the X server. And the compositor was just one thing talking to the, to the X server. That changed. If you look at the diagram on the right side, you can see that nowadays the compositor has to take care about all these things. And that is one of the, um, one of the areas which makes this uh, compositor a really huge task to do because we have to take over a lot of functionality X was normally providing us with. So that brings us to the first step. Um, so we, we had to identify what kind of components we actually had to um, replace or have to code our own nowadays when we are running Valent um, as a standalone compositor. So uh, the first obvious thing everything everybody gets in his mind is like rendering. Obviously, you have to take care about that, but there's way more than that. So just alone DRM handling, you have to talk to the kernel to get all the DM settings uh, set up. Then you have to pass the bus <laughs> around to render it and so on. But that's a lot of work that XR was doing around, and they've been spending a lot of time on that um, to make it work good and without bugs. So that's something we have to do again now. Um, so we have input handling, for example. That's also something X was doing for us normally, and nowadays we have to take it on our own. Um, yeah, VT handling, um, one of the more arcane areas of the uh, learning system. Nobody really wants to look into, but that's also something you have to take care about. Um, yeah, for example, session recovery is something. Um, so in Enlightenment, we have this feature if the um, window manager crashes, we can just recover, restart the whole thing, and that means um, all the applications are getting um, into the same position on the same virtual desktop and stuff like that. So it all got saved in the window manager. And normally, X was handling a lot of these information, like all the properties for the windows and so on, but we have to do that now on our own. Yeah, so I will hand over for Chris now to give you a bit more details on that. Thank you. All right, so for the rendering inside uh, EFL on Wayland, um, we started initially uh, with two options, a shared memory engine uh, and uh, EGL or GLES2 uh, engines. We still have those options, are both still available, uh, widely tested, run very well. Uh, we're adding a third one very soon uh, for the DRM, but I'll, I'll get into that. Uh, but basically, to make this work, uh, we had to take portions uh, inside Enlightenment itself. Uh, it was very much hard-coded uh, to use X11. There's a lot of X function calls, uh, which was our abstraction layer. Um, so what we had to do, basically, is go through the entire code base of Enlightenment and pretty much remove all those X calls. We had to make them into generic uh, Evis Canvas calls. That way, in our lower end libraries, such as Evis, uh, it would automatically determine if we're using X11, if we're using Wayland, uh, and call the right functions to make all that work. So now it's pretty much been abstracted. Everything uh, that was in Enlightenment, uh, which was X specific, has been removed now. Um, goes to a more generic uh, Evis uh, function calls, which allows us to do, you know, uh, pretty much any engine, Wayland, uh, shared memory, or EGL, or or even the X11 ones. Uh, this was the monster here, uh, the elephant in the room, so to speak, um, the DRM handling. And what I ended up doing for this, uh, we ended up having a third engine, um, but. It's not Wayland specific. Uh, I designed this to be basically usable standalone uh, from a virtual terminal you know, without relying on any Wayland libraries. The only thing it does rely on is DRM, um, which will handle KMS also. Uh, you were asking about that before. Uh, so we have basically the ability to switch between the uh, software DRM or the EGL DRM. Um, at runtime just by setting an environment variable. There is, inside the DRM engine, there is nothing Wayland specific. And I didn't want there to be anything Wayland specific. I wanted to be able to run this basically just from a, a dumb virtual terminal. Um, and in order to affect that, uh, we abstracted the buffer management um, 
so that we can dynamically change the, the device, so to speak. Uh, most of your desktops use a, a GBM, uh, the Generic Buffer Manager. Um, where we had uh, issues was for things like Tizen, uh, which uses its own separate uh, TBM, it's a Tizen Buffer Manager. Um, so I wanted to design this in, internally in the code so that it's not relying on GBM specifically or TBM specifically. Uh, you can dynamically change those also, and it will detect that also at runtime. Uh, I'm going to, right now, finishing up the GBM-TBM integration, uh, and after that, we'll probably add some gem stuff in there, uh, and maybe even a DMA buff uh, management. Not entirely sure yet how that's going to work out. All right, so what we ended up doing is it created a separate uh, eCore DRM library, uh, which we can then call from our, our various EFL places. Um, it's a central library that will handle the inputs, the outputs, uh, the virtual terminals, everything, uh, all in one spot. Um, it uses, again, uh, basic uh, libdrm functions uh, to handle KMS or generic frame buffers. Uh, all the output and input handling uh, is all done through UDEV. Uh, when you initialize the library, it will go make some UDEV calls, uh, find your outputs, find your inputs, uh, and it also supports the hot plugging for those too, uh, by way of a, a UDEV monitor. Uh, after you initialize this library, um, there is a... Th this is something that X has dealt with for us, uh, was that basically opening up input devices which required uh, escalated privileges, uh, like our input device may require root privileges or something. Uh, so what we ended up doing is when we initialize this DRM library, uh, we spawn in the background a SUID binary uh, that will open up any restricted devices for us um, and basically uses a Unix uh, FD passing. I don't know if you're familiar with that or not. Uh, but basically it will open that input device and pass us back the, the file descriptor that we can use. Uh, for then, you know, listing for events or, or stuff like that. Uh, internally, there is transparent support for the page flip and VBlank events. And what I mean here by transparent is that the user does not have to do anything, basically. Uh, all the page flip and VBlank is already handled internally. You'll get a notification that will raise an event when a page flip happens uh, or a VBlank happens. So it is possible to catch that in your application if you want to. Nine times out of ten, you don't need to, though. Um, I'm just going to skip that one. The input handling. It was originally designed uh, using the lib input, um, but I ended up with some issues uh, with main loop integration for that. So for the moment, uh, I disabled basically all the lib input stuff and just ran uh, our own code, pretty much. Um, it's designed, though, that I could put the lib input uh, functionality right back in there uh, if and when lib input does uh, improve. Uh, UDEV for the device discovery, as I mentioned earlier, uh, for outputs, it also does it uh, for inputs also. Uh, keyboard, mouse, touchpad, joystick is actually currently hard code disabled in the, in the code because I don't have a joystick to test it with, but in theory it should be okay. Uh, yeah, even multi-touch support is, is all there. Uh, there's a limited number of API functions that I exposed uh, to basically enable or disable an input device. We could, in the future, uh, expose a few more of those, but at the moment I've only found use cases for enabling or disabling. There's not much else, really, that needs to be done as far as exposing API for that. The VT handling. Um, everybody makes a big deal out of this, and I don't understand why. It is so not difficult at all. Uh, anyway, we implemented that directly into the library also. Uh, again, transparent to the user. You don't even need to know it's there. It just happens. Uh, when you basically, the kernel uses two signals to do the VT switch. Uh, you get a SIG user 1 and a SIG user 2 uh, when you release or acquire the VT. Uh, those are all handled basically transparent to, to the user. You don't even need to know about it. Uh, you can listen on some signals and get notified when that happens, uh, but typically you don't need to. Uh, we're at uh, your session recovery there, Stefan. So I'm 
taking over from here again. So, um, yeah. so the session recovery, I already mentioned that before. So we have this functionality in E that if you have a tech fault or you just want to restart, we can just remember what kind of applications have been running, where they have been placed, what was the size, and so on. Um, so X was helping us a lot there with saving all the uh, properties of the windows and so on. So now that we are going to um, have alignment running alone as radiant stand uh, compositor, we really have to take care about that now. And so what I'm doing right now is I'm prototyping something in enlightenment to um, keep the like your UIDs from different um, applications running, save all the properties, and then restore them. And at some point that will somehow have to be in, in radiant extension, but I'm just at the moment I'm just prototyping that within enlightenment. Once we are getting further with that and we having something that actually works, I'm going to yeah propose an extension for that. So, but that, I mean, even if we have this new shiny Radian compositor, we still have to support um, X applications. I mean, in a really controlled environment like whatever, a mobile setup or an IBI or whatever, or just your, your own distribution, you can really control that. But if you're a normal like real desktop um, distribution, whatever, Fedora, Ubuntu or so on, they really have to take care about even normal X applications. So even if the big toolkits like Qt, uh, GTK, Enlightenment, um, really taking care about Valen toolkit support, that still means there are smaller toolkits out there or even plain X applications. So we really have to have a sane um, backboard compatibility story for that. So there's X Valent for that. What we do is, um, so X Valent is a an, an project uh, done by the Valent guys. So um, what we basically do is we we'll just listen to the X socket. If there's some incoming connection from a client, we will just um, spawn the X valent server, and then once the last cl uh, client is gone, we will just um, start a timer and let it die again. So that means we always have um, support if X clients are running, and if not, we don't have the overhead and memory and so on for X valent running. So that's basically what we are doing there. So missing parts in Valent. So um, the focus from Valent or from the people driving it um, is a bit narrowed sometimes. So it's really a bit around like mobile or automotive um, use cases. But that doesn't mean that the protocol itself is not able to handle more. And there are more and more people coming into the community that really want to have it like a full desktop replacement. But that's something that obviously needs more work on extension. So one part of that is like the XCG shell. That is something that just got merged into Valent. That gives you, um, the protocol is a bit more oriented towards the normal desktop experience you, uh, you have. But still there are missing parts of that. Like all the things you take as a given on your normal you know, Unity setup or whatever, it's like um, Iconify, this tray, border icons and stuff like that. All this still needs work. So that is not really um, ready to use yet. So, and XCG itself needs also needs to mature a bit longer in Valent to get support there. So the normal process is you have a protocol um, extension or protocol itself in Valent, then it gets um, implemented into the Western reference design, and from there it goes upwards to all the other compositors. Um, yeah, as I said, I'm working on the um, on protocol extension maybe for session recovery that really is still in the works. So, and what I've seen over the last, I would say, six months, year, a bit longer maybe, um, it's really good to see other people's coming in, like the guys from Matter, Kevin, and so on, that really give feedback to Valent, what they need to get improved, and so on, to really bring that back to their um, normal desktops. So um, the current status. So what we have working right now is like VT switching is working, input um, and output device handling is working. Chris mentioned that already with hot plugging and so on. Um, running valent applications as well as X applications is also working. Um, we have an enlightenment itself. We no longer have a hard dependency on X if you compile it with enable valent, which is a really huge task to get that working because if you're building an um, an X11 um, uh, Windows uh, window manager. That really means you're just building it against that. And I mean, Enlightenment is in the works for 16 years or so. You obviously never really abstracted that much things out just to expect some new protocol coming or so. Um, so what is actually work in progress right now? Like Chris also mentioned that we have the buffer abstraction that's work in progress. So we need to have all that to pass it to DRM and get all the stuff rendered. Um, it's definitely not ready for day-to-day -day usage right now. Um, 
and yeah, I'm working on session recovery. So we're on a good track, I would say, a bit, uh, a bit far behind um, compared to what we actually um, hoped for. But I mean, that's just the normal way. You can can really plan that on every day. So I'm actually contemplating uh, being done by the end of the month. For August. So he hopes Op to be optimistically. Yeah. Optimistically, he hopes uh, being done with that end of the month. I don't see that, but yeah, no, we, we will see. Yeah, so a summary, um, as I just mentioned, so if you're designing an X11 window manager, that's really something um, you really rely on all the features from X. And now wrapping all that together, abstracting it, and making it possible to do have both X11 and Valence support is a huge task. Um, the um, XCG shell extension um, is missing various pieces um, to get a really full desktop experience, but I still think we're on a good track there um, to get there at some point so we can use it on our normal desktops to work and so on. I mean, as I said before, if you have like a narrowed focus with use cases like uh, mobile or something like that, it's possible to do that earlier. That is not a problem, but if you have the normal desktop experience, that's a different thing. Um, yeah, and one of the things um, that really made besides switching from, from X, made it really complicated. It's like you have to handle a lot more things on your own now. You have to do all the things, interfacing with DRM, with the kernel, doing the input stuff, and so on. And um, Chris mentions the libinput. That's um, a new library that popped up um, coming from the need that a lot of the compositors have to do all the things on their own now. And it doesn't really make sense that every compositor implements that. So libinput is like, um, trying to abstract this input handling for all kind of uh, valent compositors, big matter or um, all the other things, or enlightenment, for example. So we really hope to switch back to that at some point. It's just not working at the moment. So there is a lot of potential here to share between the projects. So in the cross desktop room, I think that really makes sense. Um, I mean, we can really put all the stuff we want to have in our own um, desktop environment on the top of that, but really all the input handling and so that's really something we could, could share. Yeah, I think that's it. So thank you for listening. Um, I don't know if you have time for questions. Yeah, we got five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, say again. Is a compositor code available yeah. to uh, to test? Yeah. Okay. So I repeat the question. So the question was, if the uh, compositor code is available to testing, yes, we have um, in in our Enlightenment repository, we have a branch called DRM in your. Uh, that's just for the DRM stuff. The okay. regular compositor stuff is in a master branch. Okay. So the the normal thing is, as Chris just said. So I don't have to repeat that, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> okay. Other questions. Uh, you mean which desktop like the distribution or okay um, well what I use is like Fedora but I all build all the stuff from the git repository so there's um, we have released E18 which is um, our latest release on enlightenment um, last year so that is going to go into the distributions right now I think they're working on I, I'm not sure if it's in Fedora already or maybe in uh, it may be in Fedora but, but if you really want Okay, but if you really want to have the latest code and the stuff you're working on, you have to go from the source. So that's not really possible to test it because it's still way too much work in progress. So it will take at some time. At the um, at the office, I use a, a Ubuntu distribution uh, to do development. But at home, I'm using Arch. So I know both of those work um, without problems. Okay. <laughs> okay. The question was here was um, if there. Yeah, sorry. Now the question was here um, if what kind of distributions we are using for that. Just I have to repeat the questions for the recording, sorry. Just go ahead. You, you said that you have implemented the management of the input. Uh, we, we had some problems with that, with touch and mouse. When that code is really going to be available, in which release, you know, when can we expect something reasonably stable, managing input? Um, OK. Repeat the question. Uh, so the question was um, about the input handling. Uh, you said you had some trouble with it, and you basically, where can I get the code was, was pretty much your question. Um, it's not actually released yet. Uh, there's a E19 release coming, I think, uh, February sometime, right? Um, it might just be 
mic is freezing. Okay, right. Uh, so it may get in there um, in the E19 release. It may not. I haven't decided yet. Uh, I'm using it pretty much every day, and it's very, very stable. Uh, but I need some other eyes and hands on it uh, before it actually gets released. If you would like, um, after the talk is over, I can give, show you uh, where to get my current code at. Uh, I have it in a separate branch. Uh, what uh, was your actual issue with the input? Oh, okay. So it's a it's a virtual keyboard problem that you're having. Okay. All right. After after the talk, I'll get together with you. We'll go over that. Uh, you had another question? Yes. Can the current compositor work if you disable VT in the kernel? Can the current compositor work if you disable VT in the kernel? Uh, the current compositor can work. Uh, but that would be for X11 only. Uh, if you disable VT in the kernel and trying to run a, a Wayland setup, um, you're going to run into a problem because basically you have no virtual terminal to draw to. Uh, basically, yeah. Well, it'll try to safely exit, you know what I mean? But it's not actually going to function, no, if you disable VT in the kernel. You can, sure. Yeah, it's just right now not coded that way. Um, that's something I actually had not considered, so I'll make a note of that and fix that problem. Yes, absolutely. Um, but yeah, as long as you have at least one one virtual terminal, sure, you could you could use it. Absolutely. Yeah, the, I mean you won't get switching or anything with it disabled in the kernel, but you know, but that's a, a good point. I'll make a note of that and, and address that issue. Uh, do you have any other questions? Okay. Um, well, if, just see me after the talk and we can handle any other questions, okay? Thank you.